let's learn how to make really cool cinema graphs in PowerPoint. So what is a cinema graph anyway? Basically, it's a photo where nothing is moving, everything is still, but there's one subtle feature that is moving and that gives it away that it's not an actual photograph, but a cinema graph. Let me show you some examples of cinema graphs on this website, and that way you can get a better idea of what they are. What's really cool about these is, it's, is it gives a surprising element to what you're showing your audience. So let me sh quickly scroll down to show you what I mean here. So this woman here, you see the entire picture is still and just her hair is blowing. Let's take a look at some, of, some other ones here. So this woman, she's stirring some kind of liquid, maybe coffee or tea here, and the rest of the picture is not moving. And what's interesting is that cinema graphs are becoming more and more popular but most people use programs like Photoshop and After Effects to make them. So I really wanted to show you how to make them in PowerPoint so that they are a lot more accessible to people. These can totally be done in PowerPoint as long as you have version 2010 or later because we will be working with video. And most importantly, it's really important that you have the right kind of video for this process. So let's jump into PowerPoint now and I'll show you how I made this. And then afterwards, I can show you how to make these for yourself. So I basically started off with this video of a boy who is drinking water and I got that off of Shutterstock.com. What's great about Shutterstock is you can actually download a comp file before you purchase and that's going to give you the video in low quality with the Shutterstock watermark, but at least you can play around with it and test it out and make sure it will work for your cinema graph. I probably ended up testing maybe dozens of videos before actually purchasing this one, so that was a really useful feature for me. Once I actually purchased this video, I put it into the slide and I just resized it just like that. And then I decided that the dripping water was going to be the motion that I would isolate and focus on for this video. So the first step that we want to do is that we want to play the video until we get to the frame that we want to freeze. So in this case, I wanted to freeze the frame as the boy started drinking. So somewhere around there. Okay, 10.46 here. So what I do is I go to playback now and then I trim the video. Just make it 10.46 here, just like the frame that we ended on. Great, so now I'm starting with that frame. Now here's where I take a snapshot of this frame. So what I do is I right click and then I copy. And then let's make a new slide, control M. And let's paste this in here. So right click and then we actually paste this as a picture. And that should paste right in the middle of the screen here. Next, what we do is we make our looping water. So let's go here. Here, this is, this is our first slide and we have the video here. Now let's go to format and now we actually crop around the water. And we can cut it off just above his hand. So now we grab this. Control C to copy, then Control V to paste. And it should paste right on top of it, just like that. Now you have basically the beginning of your cinema graph here. Before we test it out, let's just trim the end of the video as well first. So we go to playback again, and then we trim the video, and this time we pull the end backwards until we are capturing as much of the dripping water as possible. So we want to cut it off before the stream of water gets interrupted by his hand. And the good thing about water is that it's pretty loopable, so we don't have to worry too much about matching the last frame to the first frame, as you would have to do if it was a much tougher looping situation. 
Okay, so we have from 10.4 to 11.5, which gives us just over a second of motion, which is good. I would not recommend less than a second because PowerPoint will, <laughs> will freak out and do all sorts of crazy things as I learned the hard way. And then now we, now we hit loop until stopped. And now let's just go to the animations tab and change the animation settings so that the water will start dripping as soon as the slide starts. Just put that here, go to play, and then start with previous. So now when we go to presentation mode, this is what we get. And here is your basic cinemagraph right here. Now, to be honest, I wouldn't recommend stopping here because PowerPoint just isn't used to handling such quickly looping video. So to make it much smoother, I actually usually export this to a video so that the picture and the video here will be combined into one video cinemagraph, which can then be turned into a GIF file if you like. Before we export to video, let's just set the transition timing so that we are in control of how long the slide is up before it ends. We have a one second loop here, so I'm going to make my transition time five or six seconds. Once you've set the transition, you're now ready to export to video. So we go up to file. And first, I really recommend compressing your video file so that you get rid of all the extra stuff that you don't need beside your little loop file. And that's gonna make your file a lot more manageable. But just make sure that you have the video in its full entirety some, saved somewhere else. So let's just compress that here. See, it saved 33.5 megabytes, which is great. And now we're ready to export, make a video, and then presentation quality. And now you have a nice video file that's seamlessly integrated and is loopable so that you can now insert it back into PowerPoint and then use it in the background of your presentations or maybe as a really cool intro slide, something to really grab your audience's attention. You can also make this into a GIF file so that you can share it more easily online. And this is what cinemagraphs typically use. So let me show you how to do that in an online converter called Jiffy, which I can quickly demonstrate right now. Okay, here I am on their website and now I just go to create. And then I go to browse so that I can get the file of the boy that I just made. And then I just find it in my documents. <laughs> Clearly, I played around with a lot of different versions before I settled on the final one. Now you can adjust the start and end of the GIF file. This one is already set at three seconds, which is perfect for me. Looks, looks good. And then I just go down here to create a GIF. And it's basically done. I can now share this on social media. I can put it on different websites. I can also right click and hit copy image. And then from here, I can paste it back into PowerPoint. Actually, if I want to, it'll take much less space than a video, although the quality will be not as great. I personally make my GIFs in Camtasia because the quality is so much better. But if you don't have Camtasia, you can use this website here to make GIFs from your cinemagraphs that you made in PowerPoint or from any other video, either in your own files or anywhere online. Okay, now that I've shown you how, to, how I did this myself, I'll now take you through some steps for how to find really good video so that you can do this on your own. And I've actually found that this is the most important step to creating a cinemagraph because if you don't have the right video, then it's never going to work and you could actually get really frustrated. Personally, it took me probably dozens of failures <laughs> in order to get to the final one that I showed you in the intro video. So it's not an easy process, but it's worth it once you finally get it. So here are four ideal features that your videos should have in order to make a good cinemagraph in PowerPoint. So the first one here is the camera does not move. So if you have a video that is panning across 
a, a certain subject or a certain landscape, for example, don't use that video because it will make it very, very hard to do this properly. Number two, make sure there is no other motion in front or behind the motion that you're trying to isolate. So for example, if you have a fountain that you wanna work with, you wanna make sure that there aren't any people walking behind that fountain, for example, because that's gonna really mess up what, what you're trying to do. Number three, the motion can be isolated in a basic shape. So when you're doing this in PowerPoint, you are limited to cutting the video to whatever the basic shapes you're provided with. For example, if I wanted to work with this fountain here, I could isolate this section. I could also isolate these fountains pot potentially because uh, they fit into a nice rectangle. This fountain here would be really, really tough to isolate. I would not recommend it because because it doesn't really fit into a basic shape. You can see that it's, if I, if I were to do a rectangle around it, I would hit this fountain as well. So I could do both of them, but it would be hard to do just the one here. So hopefully that makes sense. As you look at, at the videos that you're trying out, this will make even more sense. And finally, you want to take a section of the video that is loopable. So things like water running are probably the easiest. Things like hair flying are a little bit tougher because you have to make sure that you're matching the first frame to the last frame, or at least making the first frame a natural continuation of the last frame. So the reason I have here preferably loopable is because in some situations, you may have a really long video and that's more than enough to fit your needs. The loopable piece can actually be extremely tough and extremely time consuming. So if you don't have to make it loopable, then I suggest you don't try to force it <laughs> because it can be quite a project to uh, make something loopable. And that is it. So go out and try this technique in your own projects. And what I recommend for extra fun <laughs> is to actually try to record a video of your own and then make the cinemagraph out of that. Because that way you can make sure that the video fits all of the right characteristics and that you don't have to mess around with it too much. So have fun with this and let me know what you come up with. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked this video, feel free to check out my other photo related videos as well. And please comment, like, and subscribe and see you for my next video.